Hello, this is Snow White with my Bigfoot Diary Part 18. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I'm going to attempt to narrate this video, but I've been sick, so please excuse my voice. I'm going to do my best. This covers <clears throat> November 2016. November 1st. It was a warm evening for it being November 1st, so we sat on the front porch to listen. We were out there a while, and then from the west side we heard a vocalization, kind of high-pitched and quick. Then a few seconds later we heard coming from the other side a longer, high-pitched vocalization, followed by that weird owl sound that I've been hearing. My husband thought he heard something walking around the side of the house by the garage. Then a little bit later, coming from the west side again, but up closer to our driveway, came a different type of owl sound, but it was totally cool. It wasn't an owl either. After we went inside, the doors and windows were open, and we heard another weird vocalization come from outside. November 2nd. This morning was just, wow, what a morning it was. First, I went out to check the porch, and I found a gift waiting for me. <clears throat> it was a beautiful little Super Bowl. As I walked out there, I heard coming from the west side woods behind the trailer a high-pitched, kind of soft woo. I picked up the ball, and I walked around the house to the corner of the yard facing that part of the woods. I stopped, held out the ball, and said, Thank you. I love it. It's beautiful and on and on. Immediately I heard another woo, the same as before, from the same place. I repeated what I said the first time, and then I got another woo from the same place. It was absolutely incredible. I think I had just talked to a Bigfoot. It seems like they waited for me to come out and find the gift that they had given me and they wanted to see me find it, and then made the vocalization as I went to pick it up. To me, that's just so sweet. That was <clears throat> one of the most awesome and meaningful experiences that I've had so far. To be able to have that kind of interaction, communication, and relationship with a Bigfoot, or more than one Bigfoot, well, it's hard to put into words how it makes me feel. I feel so privileged to be able to have this experience. I don't want it to ever end, but I know that even if it did, I will always look back at it and cherish every moment that I had. This is the ball that they gave me. And another thing that happened overnight was that the newer Bigfoot doll and girl had been moved as well, as you can see in the bottom photo. November 4th, so it was Friday, 8.23 a.m. I left the porch with this yellow spool of thread in the sink strainer. We left to go look for a new car. We were gone most of the day. We re returned home, and when I checked the porch, at first it didn't look like anything had happened until I looked closer. The yellow thread that had been sticking straight up earlier was now threaded through one of the holes of the strainer. I really don't see the wind doing this. It wasn't even that windy. I'm pretty sure that one of my friends put the thread through the hole. They do the strangest things sometimes. So that's how I left it at 8.23. And then this is how I found it <clears throat> when we got home at 3.13 p.m. Stuck right through the hole. November 6th, Sunday, 6.46 a.m. The only thing that had been disturbed overnight was the new mouse toy. It was in a shell to keep it from rolling off of the railing. It had been picked up and turned around in the shell, and the shell was turned just a little bit also. As you can see in the picture, it's facing the opposite direction.
Then I took my Sunday afternoon nap. When I awoke, of course, I went outside to see if anything had happened while I slept, and it did. Yesterday, I had put a piece of sea glass over on the board at the wood pile. While I took my nap, they had brought back the yellow piece of sea glass that they had taken on October 7th. They had that yellow piece of sea glass for a month. Wow. What do they do with that stuff? Where do they keep it? But the crazy thing is where they put the yellow piece of glass when they brought it back. It was on top of the blue piece of sea glass that was on the board at the wood pile. What? Why did they do that? So this is how I left it yesterday the blue piece and then this is how I found it when they put the yellow piece on top of it I have no idea why they did that November 7th this morning it looked like they had a grand old time out there last night the mouse was on the ground, the strainer was moved over by the dice, and they messed with the Mancala game that I had put out on November 5th. First I will show you the Mancala game. Top picture is how I set it up on the 5th, and the bottom picture is how I found it this morning. Now, first of all, notice that they left three game pieces on each side of the board. They didn't put any in the holes on the board. Instead, they put one green piece to the left side of the board, a yellow and a light blue one to the right of it. The brown piece that had been on the right side was now on the porch. The blue piece from the left side was on the ground beside the porch, and that accounts for all the pieces. So why did they arrange them like this? It seems more random than the last time that they moved the game pieces, and that was on September 8th if you would like to look back at that. So, I don't know if this is a different one that did this or just in a different mood. I don't know. Now, for the rest of the things that happened, um, the top picture is how I left it. And you can see they took the mouse out of the shell that's on the ground and they moved this strainer with the thread in it behind the two dice. So... I don't know why they did that either. I'm thinking it must have some meaning though because it's directly behind the two dice. So this evening as we sat on the front porch, we heard, both heard at the same time a very human-like whistle come from around the side of the garage over by the wood pile. That's about 20 feet away from where we were sitting. It was absolutely awesome. There was no question about what made that noise. November 10th, we got a new car and it is white. So last night I replaced the red car on the porch with a white one. This morning, the only thing that had been moved was the new white car. The front was hanging off the porch. I guess they must have come up to check out the new car. I went to work and got home at around 12.50 PM. When I walked around to check things, I found that while I was at work, they had brought a blue piece of glass back that they had taken between the 14th and 17th of October. They put it on the board at the wood pile. November 11th. This morning, the only thing different was that the dice were slightly moved. I didn't take a picture and I just put them back in a straight line. We left to go get groceries at around 10.30 a.m. We returned and checked the porch at about 1 p.m. Not sure of the exact time. We went inside and ate some lunch. I had a bad headache all day so I was preparing to lay down for a little bit so that it would hopefully go away. As usual, before I take a nap, I go outside to check everything so that when I wake up, and check again, I will know whether something happened while I was taking the nap. However, when I went out to check, I found that they had already been up during that two hours. I knew this because the dice were moved again, the girl doll was on the ground, and the gift that I had made yesterday and put on the wood pile 
was moved. So there you see the dice were moved just a little bit. And the mouse is, or I mean the girl was on the ground. And the gift was moved. So I straightened everything back up. I put the doll back, fixed the gift on the wood pile, and straightened up the dice. Then I went in to lay down. Now there was a guy coming to replace the cracked windshield on the car. He was supposed to come after 2.30 and he showed up at around 3.30. It took him about 45 minutes to do the work. The car was in the garage, so my husband, of course, opened the garage door so he could go in and do his work. When he was done, at about 4.15 p.m., he told my husband to leave the garage door open for about an hour to let the glue dry. I was still sleeping at that time, but I had gotten up at around 5.25. Just as I was getting up, my husband came in to get me and said he needed to show me something. He took me out to the garage. He told me to look down at the floor of the garage, just at the entrance to it. When I looked, I saw three of his tools laying on the ground. Now these tools had been in and on the toolbox. So apparently while I was sleeping and my husband was watching television between 4.15 and 5.25, the Bigfoot decided to go into the garage and borrow some more tools. I think they must have been in such a rush, knowing that we were both home and that it was broad daylight, that they dropped some or all on the way out. Crazy Bigfoot. We think they just sit and wait for the, bit, for the garage door to be left open so they can get into the tools. And one of the drawers that he keeps the wrenches in was partway open. So I guess we'll find out if or what they took whenever they decide to bring them back again. So here's the pictures of where they dropped them on the ground, just leaving the garage. Also, <clears throat> when I checked around, I saw that some other things had been moved as well. The gift on the board was moved, but most interesting was the dice. They had been put into a stair-step pattern. So there's the gift and the dice. This intrigues me. The next picture shows it pretty good. So... I'm not sure why they did that either, but it's interesting. November 14th. This morning when I checked things, I found that the dice were just very slightly moved. And this might or might not have been the Bigfoot, but the purple stone that I'd put out on the wood pile was gone. So yesterday, you see, I put that purple stone out, and today it's gone. And the dice were just slightly moved. So I know they were up. November 17th. Yesterday I decided to put out a neat tenderizer as a gift on the wood pile. Today when I got home from work at 3, the tenderizer was gone and they had brought back the polished metallic looking rock that they had taken on October 11th. They did all of this during the day while I was at work. So they had the stone for almost five weeks. Now they have a meat tenderizer. I told my husband it's a good sliding hammer which is funny. Also, I had put out a ball that was going flat on the wood pile instead of throwing it away just to see if they would do anything with it, and well, they did, so I'll show you that in a minute here. So there's the meat tenderizer, and they took it and they put that stone back. Now the green circle shows where the ball was where I left it, and then they moved the ball up into the wood I don't know why they do stuff sometimes. <laughs> They're funny. On the 18th, this morning I took a walk around the house and didn't notice anything too unusual except for these sticks in the yard that looked a little odd. So I took a picture of it just to be sure. I mean, it does look kind of strange. So, so I left to go visit with my mom 
get my hair cut, and get groceries. So I was gone. <laughs> Excuse me, gone all day. <coughs> I put the man cattle board back out on the 13th. So it had been out there for five days. What I found when I got home really knocked my socks off. Top picture is how I'd left it on the 13th. The bottom picture is how I found it when I got home. Now they had taken the matching colored sets of marbles from each side and put them together, each set in their own hole. Now we'll start with the purple set. They put them in the hole all the way to the right. The light blue set was in the first hole of the bottom row on the left side. The dark blue set is in the sixth hole in that same row, so one set of blue at each end of that row. The yellow set is in the third hole in the top row, and the brown set is in the fourth hole in that row. So notice the symmetry of all the placements, but that leaves one more collar, the green ones. Guess where I found them? placed on each side of the girl doll's head. So what does this mean? It feels like they're honoring me in some way. And I must say that I am flattered. Another thought that came to my mind is that I have green eyes. But how could they know that? Perhaps green is just their favorite color. Or perhaps it was totally random. But no matter what, it was extremely cool. So just think of what we can learn from what I just showed you. One, they're extremely intelligent. Two, they can see colors, or at least are able to differentiate between different shades of gray. But personally, I think they see colors just like we do. Three, they apparently can organize, and they like organization. Four, they seem to have some affection for me, the girl doll, which shows a degree of emotion. Five, they definitely enjoy interaction and communicate with me in an indirect way. So perhaps you can think of more things that we can learn from what they did there. And if you can think of anything, leave, a, leave me a comment. I would love to hear your thoughts. November 19th. So after the excitement from last night, I decided to put a new gift out on the wood pile. I put out a large blue marble in a shell so that it wouldn't roll away. This morning when I got up, I couldn't believe what they had done, because it was so funny. They had turned the shell over and put the marble under it. I think that the Bigfoot have a sense of humor sometimes. Oh my goodness. So here's the pictures. This is how I left it, and this is how I found it. So I picked it up to see if something was under it, and sure enough, the blue marble's under there. So... That just struck me as so funny. I don't know why they did that. November 23rd. Today I decided to put out a new stone on the wood pile. It's a green polished stone. That was at 1.52 p.m. At 2.30 I decided to put out an apple and a banana up in the food basket. I haven't put anything in there in a while, but I thought since it's getting cold, perhaps they would appreciate the food. So I took it out and held it up and told them it was for them and, you know, that I was putting it in the basket. I knew I was going to take a nap, so I checked everything as well. And when I got up at 5.30, it was already dark, but I went out to check stuff anyway. And I found on the wood pile that they had returned the purple rock that they had taken on November 14th. They put it directly under the green stone that I had put out. And they didn't take the green one, I wonder why. But here is how I left it at 1.52. And then at 5.30, <laughs> excuse me, 5.30, they put the, brought the purple stone back. And they definitely did it during my nap. November 26th. This morning I woke up to a cute little surprise. During the night, the Bigfoot had moved the three dice over to the Mancala board. They put the two white ones in the holes opposite the holes where I had put the two light blue marbles. And they put the red die dead center of the four holes up on the hinge. Here's the pictures. So you see how I left it on the top and you see what they did on the bottom. And that, to me, that is so, uh, I don't know. They're just so intelligent. <laughs> they matched what I did. But they did it with the dice and they changed it up a little. 
so the things they do sometimes just blows my mind. So again, this shows such intelligence. They matched what I did, but they changed the game a little. They kept things symmetrical by putting the two dice together and across from my blue game pieces and put the red one in the middle. So can you think of anything else that we could learn from that? Now on November 28th to December 4th was gun season, so I brought everything in because we got hunters coming around on the property. Uh, but on November 30th, which was a Tuesday, they don't come to hunt on, um, or on, I'm sorry, it was a Wednesday. They don't come to hunt on Wednesday, so I decided to put just one piece of sea glass out on the woodpile just in case they came up. I didn't want them to think I didn't care about them. But I do think they totally understand what's going on with gun season and all the hunters being here, so they probably would have understood anyways. So, wow, this was a really interesting month, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thank you for watching.